911 back and let them know that it wasn't an emergency. Anyways, back to uh, building this board. All right, so I have the diodes on, the first set of diodes. Um, now I'm going to put on the unique parts that uh, there aren't multiples of. So I put on the resist, this is the resistor here. One resistor. It goes in the top left corner. Fit that through the hole. And I'll solder that in directly. Again, once that's on, I'll just clip these leads, get them out of the way. Then I have a big resistor, a big white resistor. That goes on the other side of the board. Again, the board's marked pretty well, right where the resistor goes. You can see a big square. You put the big square resistor there. These are not directional, so you can put them in either direction. It's not going to be, not going to matter one way or the other. Out of that, clip the leads. Then I get this blue thing. I'm not really sure what this is. It looks like a capacitor. Yeah, I'm not in danger. Um, yeah, so I'm not really sure what this is. It, it looks like a capacitor, but I don't think it is. So uh, I just know I need to put it right above that white resistor. So I'll drop that in. Now, I am by no means an electrical expert on these things, but uh, this board is so easy to put together, it's... it's uh, Anyone can do it. They're really simple. Okay, then I have another little tiny resistor here. That goes, let's see. It's a 100K resistor. That goes right here. Angle the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. goes right there on the board um, if you go to their website the uh, the nvramweebly.com website you can actually see where all these parts go uh, I've done a bunch of these boards so I kind of know and I'm just whipping through it right now and you definitely want to have a guide to show you while you're doing it but um like I say I'm just gonna kind of whip through it all right and that's all this, uh, most of the small components. I have four more diodes, actually, yeah, four more diodes to put in the little ones. This is probably one of the most standard parts in pinball. They are directional, so you have to make sure you put them in the right direction. And to tell the negative side, you look closely, you can see a stripe on the diode. Uh, the camera's not going to focus in well. But you match up the stripe on the board so you don't put them in backwards. That's four of them. Put them in, and I bend the leads. Double check to make sure they're all in correctly, and they are. And I just solder all four of these. Now these ones, these heat up a lot faster than those big diodes because the leads are much, much smaller. It's 
It's also good to clean the tip of the soldering iron once in a while, just to, it conducts heat better if you do that. Those are done. Clip those leads. Okay, so that's all the small components on the board. Now I have to um, put in the the big big components on. Uh, no, this is actually going to be used for my Bally Kiss. Uh, uh, long story short, I have a supersonic that Joe and Nick got me. And um, I'll probably build it up as a supersonic temporarily, but it's going to be converted to a Bally Kiss after, uh, after a while. Okay, now the biggest component of the board is the bridge rectifier. Um, this is what this board's all about. And it's, uh, the leads are in a kind of a weird pattern. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, two leads are closer than the, uh, than the other ones. So you just match up the holes. You know, make sure you get them in the right spot. That way you can't uh, screw up the positive and negatives. And this also has a heat sink. It's a big, big ass heat sink actually. Um, I'm gonna install the heat sink before I actually solder it on. And to install the heat sink, you just take, it comes with this little package of uh, thermal paste. You put a little thermal paste on the bridge rectifier. Doesn't take much, just a little bit. Got a nice smooth coat of it on there. Like I say, you don't want to put too much, just a little bit. Then you put the heat sink on. And then on this board, You screw it in place from behind. Come on. Just make sure the heat sink stays on to the, the rectifier and everything's tight in place. It doesn't have to be overly tight, you just have to make sure the rectifier and heat sink have a nice contact and um, that will dissipate the heat. Okay, once that's on, then I'm just going to solder the leads. Um, actually, you know what? I am not going to do this yet. Um, now that's okay. I can still do this. I was going to say I want to solder some wires on, but close to the leads first. But I'll I'll do it afterwards. So you heat up the uh, pin. This has a big lead on it, so it's going to take a little bit more heat to get the solder to melt. Uh, that frontier was pretty tempting when I was working on it, Brian. That's uh, I looked at that play field and I said I can make this. I can make this a frontier. Um, I want to do kiss for us, but uh, like I say, that was that was pretty tempting. Because that that play field is definitely worthy of trying to restore. All right, so that's done. Clip the leads. <laughs> you 
Yes, you should be. You should have been the first to play that game. All right, now I'm going to put the fuse clips on. And again, there's one fuse clip that's uh, 20 amp. So, again, I, you really can't see it, but there's a, there's a high, high voltage fuse clip. You want to make sure you put that at the 20 amp spot, which is going to be marked on the board. Um, well, again, I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but each fuse has its, uh, its rating right next to it. And also, you want to put the fuses in the clip. So you put the fuses right into the fuse clip before you, you soldered the fuse clips on the board. That way you know they're going to be lined up. This was actually a problem in your game, Brian. The person who built your board put the fuse clips in before he put the fuse into the clips. And it didn't sit well. Um, I had to actually take one of them out and redo it just because of that. Um, so again... This gets a little tricky because you have to hold the fuses in place while you solder. Um, not a big deal, but I'm just going to put the solder right on the pad. Once you get one clip on, one leg of a clip on, you can do the others pretty easily. Because that will hold it in place. Okay, so that's one clip. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't have said that if I knew Allison built it. <laughs> Sorry, Allison, if you see this. Yeah, I'm, uh, now I'm feeling guilty. <laughs> Sorry, Allison. All right, now, now the bad part for me is I can't see these fuses. I have to use the magnifying glass to figure out what sizes they are. That's because I'm old. Okay, so this is the 10 amp. Actually, that's 10. Let's just do a couple at a time. Three. Five. I'm just going to line these up in order so I know which ones are which. Four. quarters okay well don't tell her about it because I don't, I don't want Allison being mad at me all right so I'm just gonna put these on in order now so the first one is a 10 amp And my guess is Allison probably hasn't built too many of these boards. So um, this comes with experience. To know the little tricks about putting the fuses in first. And what I'm going to do now is just put all the fuses on right away. And I'll just tax, tax solder them. So I'm just going to put a, one little dab of solder, then I'll go back and fill them all in. That way I'm not constantly flipping the board over.
I should get one of those little attachments with the alligator clips to do this. It'll make holding the board a lot easier. Okay, so I have all the fuse clips tacked on now. Well, mostly, anyways. Yeah, maybe I need to do a little bit more. Okay, now I'm just going to go around and solder them all in nice and tight. One of the worst things you can have is a fuse clip that's loose. If the fuse is, if the fuse clip is loose, like if it's wobbling, um, the current that flows through it um, doesn't flow properly and will actually cause the fuse clip to burn out really fast. And if that happens, it can cause all kinds of havoc. So you want to make sure you get a good, good flow of solder to every fuse clip. <laughs> Allison, you're not supposed to be watching. I, I, I said something bad. <laughs> soldering too. I think it is fun. Okay, so I'm just going to look under the magnifying glass to make sure I get good contact with everything, or good fill, flow. Okay, so far so good. That's what the board's looking like so far. So right now, all the major components are on the board. I just have to put the header pins. Um, 
These are the header pins. And there's three of them, three sets, all different sizes, so you just match up which length you need. I'm going to put the top row on first. And on each, let me show you on this. On the board, you'll see a little arrow. That's a pin you need to remove. Um, I'm going to solder them all in place and snip that one pin. That's a, what's called a key pin. Um, when you go to put your connector on, there's going to be a, a little plastic insert in the connector that will, will stop you from putting it on the wrong connector. That's called a key. Um, so I'm going to put these in and then clip that, that pin out. And again, I just want to do one pin to start it, then I'll, I'll flow it to all of them. Um, it's kind of important that you put a little bit of pressure on the pins, just so that the connector lies flat. If it doesn't lie flat, it's, um, it's just it's a pain in the ass. It's just not good. So, you know, just solder, it doesn't matter which pin, just solder one pin, just to hold it in place. Make sure it's flat, which it's not right now. You can see uh, it's not flat, so I have to go back and redo that. So I just heat up that one pin I have to solder on, make sure it's flat. Okay, that's better. Flat against the board. So now I'm just going to go around and flow solder to each of the pins. Um, I've never tried to do a, a system one. I mean, there is no kit as far as I'm aware for system ones. Um, I would just buy a brand new one. They're they're pretty cheap. I think X Pin makes a nice one. So you heat each pin, just apply the solder to it. When it's hot, it will just flow right in. Yeah, but on yours, Brian, I'm sure it doesn't lie flat for a reason. I'm, I, I'm guessing Allison knew that the connectors weren't going to lie flat, so she did it that way on purpose. I'm trying to stick up for you, Allison. Come on. Again, you want to get a good flow of solder on these pins because they take a lot of heat. And um, if one of them doesn't make good con connectivity, it's going to screw up the game. You know, something will not work properly. Okay, so that's one connector. And again, I'm going to snip off the pin that is the, it's going to be used as the key pin. You know what? I'm, actually, I'm not going to snip it off because I want to use the right tool for it and I don't have the right tool at my desk, so I'll do that later. Um, so now I'll go to the next set of pins.
But again, I solder one on just to kind of to tack it in place. Make sure it's flat. Then just go around and solder all the other pins. Almost all the problems with these old ballys are connectors, and a lot of times it's the connector pin that's the problem. So again, this is a pretty important job to do on any old bally pinball. Is just make sure you get a good, good rectifier board, and you want to repin all your connectors as well. That that will save a lot of problems. Literally, almost all the problems on these games come from bad connectors. All right, second header done. Now the big connector, big header pin, I should say, big, big header. And I'm running out of solder. I have to go to my uh, workshop and get some. Solder is my the bane of my existence. I always seem to lose my solder. So what I've done now is anytime I get a new spool of it, I break off a big chunk and leave it on my desk and leave some in my toolbox and just spread it all around so I, don't, I always know where it is or I always have some handy. And this was my desk supply and I guess I just run out. Okay, that's tacked in place now. Okay, let's see how many pins I can do with the remaining solder before I get more. When you're done with the header pins, you also want to take a close look under a magnifying glass to make sure none of the, none of the solder has created bridges between pins. All right, I'll be right back. I need to get solder now. Fresh solder.
I tend to put a little extra solder on all these pins just to, because they take a lot of abuse. Between connectors coming on and off and heating up, it's um, like I say, these pins take a their share of abuse. Almost done. All right, that's all the pins. Now I'm just gonna again, look at them, make sure they all look good. Everything looks good. So that board is built now. This is a, a completed rectifier board. So this will this will keep a galley or stern running nice and smooth. Now the fun part to replace it onto the power supply. Um, so I have the big heavy power supply here. Oh, actually, before I do that, I want to clean the back of the board up. Um, I use a toothbrush with alcohol just to clean up the, the solder flux. It basically just give it a little scrubbing over all the pins you just soldered on. You're not gonna damage it with alcohol, so just give it a good cleaning. The alcohol dries pretty much instantly, so it's no big deal. All right, so that's that board is done now. Now, like I see the fun part. Um, cleaner. Realistically, this is going to be the last time you ever take this piece out of the machine. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a cleaning before I put it back together. And I'm just using a basic household cleaner, nothing special. And you really don't need to do this, but why not? Like I say, it's the one time it's out of the machine and it's easy to do. Just make sure you don't break any of the wires. On some games, these are really rusted. And if that's the case, I might even take some, um, some paint and just touch it up. Um, this one actually is, the power supply is in pretty good shape. So that's that. So now I have to take the old board off the power supply. 
And it's got these little pinch pins, plastic pins that you have to pop off. Uh, what do I do with my pliers? When you buy a board, it actually comes with new pins. Um, I probably will save those for another one because these pins actually look like they're in okay shape. That's about the only thing left on this board that's in okay shape. Okay, so the board's off the, the back panel now. Uh, I'm going to clean up that back panel while I have it. As you can see, it's also, this is at the original heat, heat sink. It's just basically a piece of steel with a um, heat compound on it. I'm just going to pitch it. I'm never going to use that again. The new boards, the heat sink is built right onto the rectifier, so you don't need it. And if I was being a real, real uh, OCD person, I'd probably take this off and give it even better cleaning. But um, this is something that'll never be seen, so I just want to make sure I get the big chunks of dirt off of it. And again, if this was really rusted, you could actually paint it, but. This one doesn't look so bad. All right. Oh, man, this board is bad. All right, so the, probably the next best thing you should do is take a picture of this board so you know where all the wires go. Um, especially a board like this where the wires are just so burnt and crusty looking, you really can't tell the colors. Um, it's probably best to, like I say, take a picture, which I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do because I don't have a camera hand, handy. Um, so I'm just gonna snip them. I'm gonna snip them and then put, uh, basically do them one at a time if I can. Now, well, actually, that might not work. Wow, this is bad. can't believe how bad these wires are. That one's going to have to be replaced. Actually, that has been replaced. And was, whoever had this game was a hack. Normally what I do is I snip the wires and leave a little bit of the end showing so I know what color they were. Because um, you can match up the colors to where they go. The wires in this are so burnt that I really can't even do that. So I'm just going to have to... Um, I'm just going to have to remember where they all are. Not a big deal. I mean, I've done enough of these so it's no problem for me. But if it's the first time doing it, like I say, leave a little extra wire so you know which wire goes where. Also, the, the wires tend to stay in place, so you kind of know where they go on the board. Um, and so that's this board. Um, I'll, I'll save some of those fuses, but other than that, the board's trash. All right, so now I have to solder the new board on. Um, Clean up the wires a little bit. Yeah, this wire here has been replaced at some point, so I'm gonna have to really replace that with a better, better quality wire. Um, I'll probably do that off stream.
All right, so you, I have these fancy wire strippers. And um, basically just put them on, it strips the wire nice and clean. So I'm just gonna go around, strip the ends off. Don't need to take much off, just a little bit. Are stripped. Yeah, these wire strippers are awesome. And okay, what I'm going to do is just look at the color of the wire I had left. Match it up with the new board where it goes and start from there. They are all labeled. They'll have a E1 through 12, I think it is, or 1 through 16. I'm not sure what the numbers are. So you just match up where they belong. Put them through the board. And then just sort them in. There are instructions as to um, where all these wires go to. So you put your soldering iron right on the, the hole, the through hole, and you know, on the wire itself, and then apply the solder, and that'll give you a nice contact on it. Nice clean solder. You want to make sure you heat the wire up and the, the hole itself.
You can solder these wires from the front of the board or the back of the board. It really doesn't make, make a difference. Um, once I finish soldering them, I'll, I'll check both sides to make sure that good contact. On a few of the, the spaces, there are actually are two holes. Um, that's because in the old boards, they used to solder two wires together. Um, on the new boards, they actually have two holes for each wire. And you know what? I'm going to snip one of these zip ties on the, um, the wiring harness just to give me a little more slack. that This is the trickiest part of doing this whole job is that you want to make sure you get the wires in the right spots. Like I say, there are there is paperwork showing you or telling you which color wire goes where. Um, I'm just not bothering to, bothering to use it right now. about half done I'm 
and two. Come on. Big red. E1, all right. So I just made sure this red wire, I wasn't 100% sure where it goes, so I just looked on the old board to see, and um, it says to connect it to E1, so that's what I'm doing. Bit of a stretch for the wire, so it's um. Yeah, I wish I had a helping hand here, but helping hand means those alligator clips. So I'll just wedge it there, put some solder on, be all good. <sighs> Holding in place until the solder sets. Just a few more wires.
Just about done. One wire that, uh, do I want to splice it? This one wire is really a mess. Um, I'm just going to try to snip it off and see if I have enough room. If I may have to redo it entirely, but we'll try it. This may not work, but uh, we'll give it a shot. Okay, actually that should work fine. All right, so this board is done. Everything's soldered in place now. Um, now I need to get some zip ties and just zip tie these wires a little closer, which I actually have on my desk, fortunately. And then I just gotta check all the solder connections and we're done. You want to solder the wires together just so they're not rubbing up against anything. Um, the worst thing, the, the one thing you really don't want to have happen is have the wires rub up against the board or something else and just have them wear out and cause a short. That would, that would be bad. All right, so that's done. I'm going to look at the top side of the board now to make sure all the wires are good. You know, I'm just going to add a couple dabs of solder on a few of these just to make sure get a pair of clippers too So I'm just going to add a little bit more solder on these. I'd rather be safe than sorry on this because if one of these do break free, well, it's in the game, it's a pain in the ass to fix. So I can say, once you get this board in the game, you don't want to take it back out again. Not that it's difficult, it's just heavy, it's just a heavy, awkward piece. Alright, so I added a little bit more solder to each of the connectors. Now with my clippers, I'm just going to clip off any excess wire. Not a lot, but a little bit extra, extra here and there. I 
and this is really unnecessary but it just makes it look a little cleaner I'm also going to clip off the key pins, which I didn't do earlier. And on some Valley games, um, on some Valley games, they use a, um, one extra pin here. Not all games are going to need this pin. So if you go to connect it and you have one extra pin showing, don't be freaked out by it. All right. And um, I just have to reconnect this, place this onto the board. Actually, clip one more pin. So the port is complete, all wired up now. Everything looks good. Now you just gotta push it back onto the, the standoffs. Like I say, I'm using the originals. It does come with a brand new set for you. Um, but I'm gonna use the originals if I can. Snap them in place. And we're done. So we have a nice new Valley Rectifier board ready to go. And this will be the last one the machine will ever need. Um, they're much stronger than the originals, and uh, like I say, being brand new, brand new components, it's going to last a lot longer. And uh, it's going to make sure your game runs complete for a long time. Anyway, so that's it. That's how you build a. Rectifier board and uh, again if you need these they're from NVRAM uh, Go to the website NVRAM Weebly and um, They're like 30 bucks. They're the best deal out there. So Hope this came out. Okay Take care everyone <laughs>